being a bit counterproductive, really, for trying to sleep with a gay man to dress up as a woman. <laughs> but you know, I started cross-dressing, and I got bullied a lot. And uh, quite funny, actually, because I went to one of these schools that has a zero tolerance policy on bullying, right? Which I naively assumed meant we have a zero tolerance policy on bullying. But what turned out to actually mean, we have a zero tolerance policy on bullying if it ends in suicidal manslaughter. Up until that point, it's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> trying to help, but there's only so much you but I imagine quite a lot of you in here were bullied at school at some point. I won't ask you to identify yourselves, it is pretty fucking obvious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, you, you, they, they give you advice, it's always really shit advice. Like I'm sure we're all aware of the sticks and stones cliche, right? You know, when if someone's verbally abusing you, you meant to go up to you meant to go, aha! Sticks and stones may break my bones, but if you've got a knife, that'll be much more efficient. <laughs> Or you could probably get a room full of intensive stroke lighting and induce an epileptic seizure in me. Fuck it, why don't you just squirt shampoo on my eyes? That always stinks. Uh, you could feed me undercooked chicken and give me food poisoning. Let's not even talk about napalm. And you can, you can, fuck it, why don't you just set me on fire? That's not going to do me any favours. Oh, I'll tell you what, why don't you probably read really creative? You can like, bioengineer a massive Venus flyer and push me into it and then shut it and then acid will, will surround me and I'll be all like, ah, I'm melting, I'm melting. <laughs> Words! Words will never hurt me! <laughs> and and you, you meant to say that, you meant to say it to everybody, and he's meant to go, oh, drat. Oh, curses, dastardly, because that went to a 1950s British stereotype school. <laughs> oh, damn you and in, in meddling kids. Oh, uh, I, I, I see that my strand of bullying uh, you, you're too strong for, so I will never bully you again. Would you like some ice cream? But in reality, it doesn't happen. But it's not the worst advice I've ever had for being bullied. You know, the worst advice, again, another very common one, is, oh, just ignore him. Now, just, if you just ignore him while he's fussing your head down the toilet and, and giving you a wedgie and, and beating you up, just ignore him. Because uh, if you react to him, he'll just keep doing it. If you just ignore him, he'll get bored and he'll stop. Right? Which is bad advice for three reasons. The first one being, it doesn't fucking work. Uh, the second one being, did I mention it doesn't work? And the third one being, is even if it did work, that's pretty shit advice to be, get, to be putting into someone's head at a very early age, that the best way to deal with your problems is by ignoring them until they go away. Like, in what situation? Is that a good idea? And this is how I know for a fact that our Prime Minister, David Cameron, must have been bullied at school. Because that appears to be the basis for all of his policies to do with the working class. Like, uh, David Cameron, you know, we've got a lot of homeless people right now. You know, people, people living on the streets, got nowhere to go. Do you think maybe we should offer more help and accommodation for people in this situation? No, 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 no. You don't understand homeless people. You can't, you can't just help homeless people, because that's what they want. If you keep helping homeless people, they'll just help them being homeless. Uh, but, uh, you've got to ignore them, and then eventually they'll get bored of being homeless, and just stop. <laughs> okay, right, um, okay, on a different topic, what about all these multi-billion pound corporations and individuals uh, avo avoid avoiding paying a fair amount of tax by putting all their money to an offshore bank account? Do you not think maybe, maybe we should do something to stop people from being able to do this? Now, the last thing I'd want to be is a hypocrite. Uh, <laughs> Do that when, uh, when, when my current plan of privatizing everything that makes it possible for working class people to live is working just fine. No, no, no. Maybe next Christmas, uh, three ghosts will halt the CEOs of these companies and persuade them into changing their ways. But up until that point, let's just cut all the public services. It's fine. Right, okay. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, this side, sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, a final question. What about all these uh, 18 to 25 year old unemployed people in massive amounts of debt due to tuition fees? Do you not think that maybe we should give them a few more like career costs, or at least lower tuition fees so they're not going to be in inescapable amounts of debt for the rest of their lives? Ah, oh, I've actually got a really good idea for this, right? Uh, what we're going to do to help the uh, unemployed 18 to 25 year olds, what we're going to do is we're going to wait eight years, and then they won't be unemployed 18 to 25 year olds, they'll be unemployed 26 to 32 year olds! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for this problem, just like my wife's orgasms, I'll let it sort itself out. <laughs> oh, that's a low blow, isn't it? That's quite harsh, isn't it? Because really? I, I mean, I, I don't agree with David Cameron on many things, but yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that's that's a bit harsh to insinuate that David Cameron is bad in bed when you've when you've like, have you ever slept with David Cameron? And the answer is no, I have standards. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, but I do think that he is bad in bed, and I've got one very solid piece of information to uh, assure me that David Cameron is very bad in bed. And uh, what is that information? You ask, well, he didn't suck that fucking pig's cock, did he? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have a very 
very open-minded individual, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what you want to put your dick in. You, sir, you want to put your dick in that much time. You put your dick in that much time. <laughs> you, sir, you want to put your dick in a toaster? I wouldn't advise it. If you want to do it, fucking do it. I do not, I'm not going to judge you for what you want to put your penis in. What I will judge you for is not returning the favour. <laughs> and not at least consider putting the dead pig's penis in your mouth, then you are a bastard, and when you die, I'm going to train a pig to face fuck you and see how you fuck like. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. Okay. Alright, so I thought we were starting to applaud, and I know one else was going to do it, and I'm like, oh, we're going to peer press, we probably should, shouldn't we? Okay, this person clearly has no friends, let's make him feel loved. Show for you tonight. Uh, as uh, most of you are aware, this is uh, an assessed performance. Uh, I'm not being assessed, so I can be as shit as I like. But uh, everyone else tonight is being assessed. They're all, uh, they're all really close friends of mine, really fantastic people. Uh, it's going to be a really good night. So if you show as much, much support and love as you can possibly muster, and they'll be, they'll be much better for you. And if, and if they're much better, they'll get a good grade. And if they get a good grade, they'll probably give at least half of you blowjobs. So uh, it's in your best interest. It's in your best interest to uh, be in other words. Uh, just a couple of rules first. Uh, turn off our mobile phones or put them on silent. I wasn't directing that at you, but I did see a phone. So that's, that's, that's why we say it now, so you're not embarrassed later by going off on one of the acts answering the phone and telling everyone that, that uh, you've been molested. So, so yeah, uh, turn off your mobile phones, no talking while the acts are on, uh, and essentially just uh, having a good time, which will be easy because the acts are fucking phenomenal. So ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your first act? Yeah! This side of the room, give me, uh, give me some applause. Yeah! This side of the room, stamp your feet. Right, everyone was seeing water on camera three. One, two, three. Water. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know the words, we're just going to say it's time for some fun. It's a stunt double for Thomas the Tank Engine. I like sex a lot. I've been masturbating. Uh, the first, uh, I remember the first ever time I masturbated was when I was 12 years old. But I didn't start doing it regularly until I was 12 years and two days old. And uh, <laughs> since then, I'm going to admit, I have become uh, a little bit of a slut. Right? And uh, so, uh, did you give us a chair slut syndrome? Don't fuck on the life! <laughs> If you don't share, I'm gonna fuck you all and make you change that. I was like, you get friends rape us all, but I think that is really good. <laughs> uh, no, 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 when, it's not the perfect, when I'm saying slut, I don't mean that, that term is an offense. I don't think the word slut should be an offensive term. You know, I, I'm, I'm very much proud uh, to consider myself a slut. I don't, I don't understand slut shaming at all. And it is usually men as well, which fucking baffles me. It's like, if you're the kind of man who shames a woman for having sex, uh, that tells me two things about your personality. 
One, you're probably a misogynist, and two, you definitely can't get laid. <laughs> and it's, it's that, you know, because I've, I've got male friends who have, who have called women sluts if the said woman refuses to sleep with him. How does that work, logically? I know, in fancy shag, or now you're right, oh, you must be a slut! Is <laughs> that how this works? <laughs> so they apply this logic to other areas of their life, you know, just like, uh, just walking down the street going, excuse me, if you've got the time, oh, no, don't, sorry, oh, you must be a clock! <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> going to a swimming pool going, excuse me, if you got any heroin, no, we don't, this is a swimming pool. We don't sell heroin in swimming pools, so it's actually illegal. Oh, you must be a drug dealer! What? <laughs> That's not how Jonathan, Jonathan, do you have an ending to this routine? No, oh, don't afraid. Oh, you must be a fantastic comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I do, I do like sex. Uh, well, I don't like sex, I think like's the wrong word. It's more, it's more of a need nowadays. It's more that uh, I have sex because it stops me from killing myself. And, uh, <laughs> I wish that was a joke. <laughs> but it, it is very much an addiction, right? In, 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 in the same people get addicted to gambling, people get addicted to tobacco, and people get addicted to uh, telling people that they only listen to real metal, like Slayer. And it's, uh, very, that's very much an in joke with people who listen to metal. Basically, metal heads are cunts. Yeah. Um, yeah, she knows. Um, but, uh, no, it's very much an addiction. It's not taken nearly as seriously as a tobacco addiction. Because right? lots of places, like uh, lots, lots of workplaces, you can, uh, if, if, as long as it's quiet, there's not too much to do. People, you're allowed to sit out for like a five-minute fag break, right? Which is fair enough. I think that I think that's fine. But like, when, but when I need a whack right, and it's quiet in the pub, where's my five-minute fag break? <laughs> If wanking was treated like smoking, it'd be brilliant. Like, you just go out to the pub folk with a few drinks for some mates, you just fancy a wank. You get up and go in there, anyone, any, anyone fancy a wank? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll go outside, I went for one two minutes ago. Oh, no, I'll just go over myself then. And, and then when you go outside into the wanking area of all the other wankers, <laughs> and, then, and then you get your cock out and you, know, you just, you just uh, start small talk with the, uh, with the other wankers. Excuse me, if you've got tissue, I can borrow. Uh, yeah, I might do a hand, just give me some. And, and you hold this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So if you could give it back to me when you finish with it, oh, you're on a life saver, thank you. Uh, <laughs> up to much this weekend? <laughs> uh, no, just just uh, visiting, visiting the parents, you know, just, uh, having dinner, having Sunday dinner, having parents. I was, oh, that would be lovely. Yeah, well, but the uh, thing is, they don't know I'm a wanker. <laughs> so, uh, no, I've got to do it on the sly, you know, and there's only so many times I can say, I just want to nip out to the shed to get some tools before they become suspicious. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not, not fair. You know, I, think, I, I don't think it's down to your parents to say what you can and can't do with your body. You, you should be a proud wanker. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. Uh, you, with anyone uh, today? Oh, yeah, just, just, just going out, uh, just out drinking with some friends. Uh, oh, right, uh, none of them wankers. Uh, no, no, they're all massive wankers. It's just um, they've all started using e flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the smart bastards! <laughs> semen I'm inhaling. <laughs> if my kids are inhaling, you know, none of us are wankers. We've still, we've still got to pick up your rubbish. And I'm like, love, if you don't want to be jizzed on, just don't sit next to any wankers. <laughs> Which um, is pretty good advice for life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you don't want to get jizzed on, don't sit next to wankers. <laughs>